All right, so we have, let's, let's do this. All right, so we've been doing this the hard way. I'm not gonna lie. So evaluating definite integrals, even though we'll do indefinite integrals, it's just another chapter. So if F is continuous on an integral, then the definite integral from F of A to B is just the antiderivative evaluated at B minus the antiderivative evaluated at A. That's, that's all it is, right? So when we do the antiderivatives, um, we're gonna use that now to solve integrals. And so instead of like doing these, you know, doing a Riemann sum where we break it into a bunch of rectangles and just sum up the rectangles or do a limit of those rectangles go to zero, we're just gonna use the antiderivative, okay? And so we already learned what the antiderivative is in 4.7, so we're good to go. Um, is the antiderivative of f, that is the f prime equals f. And for the indefinite integral, so the definite integral has Places you evaluate between A and B, the indefinite integral, which I made uber mistake on. Um, there shouldn't be no A and B there. It should look like this: f of f of x dx equals. So there's no, there's nothing there. That was just an error on my part. So if we don't know what it is, remember. Remember how the antiderivative was unique up to a constant? Well, here we need to carry whatever that constant is. So now we do care what that constant is. So we say f of x, the antiderivative of x plus c. So if I have bounds, I evaluate it. If I don't have bounds, I, I just add the c. Okay. So let's actually just show you how you actually punch through some of this. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, so let's evaluate this. So what's the antiderivative of e to the x? Well, what function, if I take a derivative, I get e to the x? Well, that's e to the x, right? And so this antiderivative is e to the x. But we're gonna take, let me actually be a little bit more clear for the first one. So f of x is equal to e to the x, well, f of x, so it's its own antiderivative. So what we plug in here, so this integral between one and three equals of e to the x dx is equal to e uh, f of three minus f of one. In this case would be e to the three minus e to the one, which is just e cubed minus e. Oops. And that's how you type it in the computer or leave it for the notes. That's 100% fine. Another way of writing this, um, and let me show it to you so you've seen it, is e to the x dx is equal to f of x. And then you're going to see, um, how does your book do it? I mean, I mean, do it the way your book does it. Your book uses a bracket? It looks like your book uses a bracket between one and three. And what this means is evaluate, uh, evaluate it between one and three. And so that, that's equal to e to the three minus e to the one. I'll show you this bracket notation a couple more times. All right, so here, so find the area underneath the cosine curve between zero and b, where b is between zero and two. Sorry, let me. It should have a pi over two. That way it's nice and clean. So here, I want to find the integral between zero and b. So I don't know what it is, some b, right? But I want it's cosine of x dx. Well, the antiderivative of cosine is sine of x. We're going to evaluate this between zero and b. And then, so this is equal to sine of b minus sine of zero. But notice sine of zero is zero, right? So this will just be sine of zero. Okay, that's it for this page. I'll let you copy that down. Uh, why is it six? 
No, it's B. These are B's, sorry. I draw my B's wrong. Because the proper way to do a B is like this. Um, for whatever reason, my script that's a six and this is a B. So it makes it rough for you guys. Sorry. <laughs> if I had better handwriting and made my B's correct. Okay. Now, if you ever have any questions about my handwriting, please let me know. I mean, writing on a tablet is not the best in the world. So, um, I here just because. So you saw this in four point seven. Um, I added one more. Added this one for you guys. And so I was like, eh, I'll give it to them, right? Because what you need in order to do this, you have to have this table in front of you. So I'm giving you the table again. So this is how you do all the stuff. And so we're going to, we'll, we'll reference this table to do things. So here I want to evaluate this one. And so notice this one's an indefinite interval, aka it doesn't have anything, doesn't have any upper or lower evaluation point. Okay. So here, we're just going to take the antiderivative and add plus C to it. Okay. So, and in order to do something like this, we're going to do it, we're going to do it bit by bit. So let, let me do this is n x to the fourth um, dx minus two, and I'm going to pull out the minus two secant squared x dx. And you know, technically, I could pull out this 10, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull out the 10. Look how that's as easy as possible. All right, so here, um, and I'm going to just do this right underneath so it's just easier for me to crunch through. Um, so the 10, I leave here, x squared, so x, x to the fourth, so I'm going to add one more to it, so this would be 4, so this goes to 5, and I'm going to divide by 5, so this would be x to the fifth divided by 5, minus 2, secant squared, so secant squared just turns into tangent, be minus 2 tangent of x, and then I need to add a plus c, where c is some arbitrary constant. And then I can go ahead and clean this up. So I'll get 2x to the fifth minus 2 tangent x plus c. So when you see this, just take it into parts. Just do the first term, do the next term, and just keep working forward. All right, let's do this one. So here, we this one's a definite integral because I have um, my upper and lower. And so here we're going to break this one into part, minus b minus or dx minus 6x dx between 1 and 2. All right, and we'll go ahead and do this right below. So this becomes x to the fourth all over 4 minus 6x is minus, it's just a little clear what I mean. Zero and three. There we go. And then x, x becomes x squared. You know, I forgot the negative one twice. <laughs> I forgot the negative twice. I should have a negative one. It's like looking at that double negative one. So this is not x equals to negative one. That one's done separately below. This becomes just x squared over 2. And so I don't add a c here. I evaluate this at 0 and 3. And what does that mean? Is I take uh, 3 to the 4th over 4, plug in the 3 minus 6, 3 squared over 2. And then I minus out. This evaluated at 0, so it would be 0 to the 4 over 4, minus 6 to the 0 squared over 2. Well, zero and zero, this is all just zero. Um, so it just becomes whatever this mess is. And this mess, if you type it into a calculator, is mm 
minus 6.75. Okay. So I just check this little calculator. All right, any questions on example three or example four before I go to example five? So all we're doing here is we just break it up into its terms. So we're just breaking it into its terms. Now, if you went from this step to this step, I'd be zero angry at you, right? I'm just showing very clearly what I'm looking at, okay? So you go from here to here. This is what most people do, is they go from this step to this step, and they skip the intermediate. This is an intermediate step that I'm doing while you first do it, but you eventually never don't need to do it. And in fact, I'm not going to do it on this one. All right, so let's do this slowly. So this one's a definite integral, so we need to evaluate it. So here, the anti-differentiation of this is two to the x to the fourth over four minus six x squared. So this goes up by one, and, and then it's two, and we divide by it over two. And then I have this, so this would be plus three well, one over x squared plus one, is that somewhere up here? Yes, here. So that just becomes arctangent. So this is be three arctangent of x. I'm gonna evaluate that between zero and two. Why do you need the C on three but not four? Ah, so, in three, I do not know where I'm going, right? I don't, I'm not specifying where I'm going. I'm not going from one to two or from high to eight or from negative 55 to 27. I don't know. And to represent the fact that I don't know where I'm going, I add the C. If I do know where I'm going between zero and three, or in this case from zero to two, or in the case before between zero and B and one and three, I don't. So. So that's why you do that, okay? All right, so here, here we do know where we're going. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna simplify that and just make that a two. So this is two times, I'll plug in two squared minus uh, six divided by two, would just be minus three times two. So this is a four, this is a two, sorry, so three tangent of arc sine of two minus, so all this minus, we're, and then I'm gonna plug in zero everywhere. So this would be two zero to the fourth minus three zero squared plus three arc tan of zero. I'm pretty sure all that equals zero, zero. Yeah, so all this is zero. Um, so what's this over here equal? I'll go ahead and just it chunk it through a calculator. I would just go ahead and leave it in this form. That's fine. Because uh, this is the exact form, because this this is arc tangent of two is not a clean number. Okay. Um, if you want, you could give it the you could roughly estimate it to be zero point six seven eight five, but either is fine. Uh, just if it doesn't say round in the program, put in this. If it says round to X amount of digits, use that. Okay. All right. I'll let you guys copy that down. We only have one more page to go. This section isn't that long to explain. Uh, how do we incorporate the brackets? Oh, okay. So here. Here, so here I put in a bracket. That means this bracket is how you're, um, I've seen this a thousand different ways. So I'm using what your book's using. So the bracket means evaluate this at two and at zero and minus the difference. And so here at two, I plug in two everywhere I see an X. And then I'm gonna minus uh, this evaluated at zero. So it's this function here, this function right here, this function right here, evaluated at two is this. This function right here evaluated at zero is this, and you just minus the two, okay? So that's how we incorporate the bracket, okay? So this means this function evaluated 
at two minus the function evaluated at zero. I think you misstated it before. So two divided by two. Um, so two divided by four is just two. So I simplified it. Does that make sense? Oh, you're right. It's four. Hi. <laughs> I simplified it all wrong. Thank you. Two divided by four is what? Why it's a half. Luckily, I didn't make that mistake. <laughs> I'm crunching the numbers. Sorry about that. Good, good catch. Very, very good catch. You're paying attention. All right, let's do the last page. All right, so now we're gonna do something awful. This is awful. Everyone agree this is awful? <laughs> um, so how do we handle awfulness? And so sometimes awfulness is just, sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do algebra first. We're gonna do algebra first. Algebra. I'm going to do algebra first. What do I mean by that? Here, I'm going to do 1 over 9, and I'm just going to divide, divide everything by t squared. So 2 divided by t squared is just 2, plus t squared divided by t squared is just t to the 1 uh, half, or the square root of t, right? But I'm going to convert the square root of t into t to the half minus 1 over t squared. Okay. And then 1 over t squared, I'm actually, let me... Let me not skip this step. So here is divided by this dt. And notice here if my variable is t, my this should also my d my d whatever should also be the same variable. So if it's x here, it should be dx. If it's t here, it should be dt. If it was w here, it'd be dw. All right, I'm gonna simplify this just even a little bit more. I'm gonna go from zero to uh, uh, yeah, let me keep working with that. I'm gonna go from zero to nine. 2 plus, I'm going to write this as t to a half, just to make my life easier, and this is t to the minus 2, also to make my life easier. So the square root is the same thing as raised to half power, and then 1 over t squared is the same thing as uh, t to the negative 2 power. And the reason I do this is because it's easier for me um, to see how to, what to do for the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 2 is 2t. Two because remember, do I have it here? I don't know if I have it here. Yeah, I don't have it here. It, it's actually encapsulated in here. So here, if I have a constant, the antiderivative be at cx, right? So if I have a constant, my antiderivative is c to the x. It's technically encapsulated here because this is x to the 0. And then I raise it to the first power over 1. But you can add that if you want. So this just becomes 2t. Let me make a Put little curves on my t so I can differentiate that from the plus sign. All right, t to the half. So I'm going to raise this. I'm going to raise this up by a half or by one. So this becomes three halves, and then I divide by three halves, and so divide by three halves. Okay, and then here I'm going to raise this by one higher. This be by so this goes up to minus one, and then I'm going to divide by negative one. And I'm going to evaluate all this between 1 and 9. Notice here, I'm going to simplify this as 2t to the plus 2 thirds t to the 3 halves. So if I divide by 3 halves, this is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And then if I divide by negative 1, this would be the same thing as adding t to the minus 1. And right, we're going to evaluate by 1 and 9. All right, so let's plug that in. So here, if I do a little bit of algebra, so sometimes you're going to get a mess, do a little bit of algebra to make it simpler. And then I did a little more algebra just to make it easier to do the anti-differentiation because 2 just goes to 2t, t to the half goes to t to the 3 halves over 3 halves, t to the negative 2 goes to t to the negative 1 over 1. Um, and notice we just add, we add 1 to our exponent, and we add 1 to our exponent, and then divide by the new exponent. All right, so here if we evaluate, this would be 2 times 9 plus 2 thirds 
9 to the 3 halves power plus 9 to the 1 half, or that's actually 1 over 9, minus the valuation of 2 to the 1 plus 2 thirds 1 to the 3 halves power plus 1 to the minus 1 power. You crunch this through. Um, the calculator. And so let's let's crunch one through and wolfram alpha. Let me show you how to type it in like a large wolfram alpha. I think that'd be a good thing for me to do. All right. Uh, so let's let me type in what we have here and let's see if it matches what wolfram alpha thinks it is. So be two times um, nine. I get 292 newts. Okay, so let's just write that down. 92. Right. All right, and let's, let's type it in directly. Does it matter if we plug in the nine of the one first? Yes, it does. So it's, it's the upper one, the upper one minus, so it'd be F of nine minus F of if you type it in, in the other way, um, you will get minus that number. Okay, you'll get minus that number. What does the, the bracket mean? The bracket means this. This is literally what the bracket means. Take this function, plug in nine minus the function minus one. Okay, that's what the bracket means. Evaluation. You're going to evaluate it at nine minus the evaluation of one. It's just shorthand. Instead of writing this, instead of writing this whole function out nine, whole function out one, you just write it this way. Okay, it's just shorthand that we've been using for time out of memory. All right, so let's type it in one more time. Let's type it in. Now let's just type in in. So let's just type in int. So int means integral for the calculator. And so here we have two. Uh, t squared. Now let's actually just leave it the way we actually originally saw it. Plus uh, t squared plus qr t plus actually I forgot it was just a one or a minus one. Minus one. Close. Close that off. So here we get um, what, so here we can check that we did our function, right? Plus our constant, so that's our C. And here we can do, um, but let me do, forget, do I type it in this way? Is that how I type it in? Yes, yeah, so it'd be, so you type in int caret, the upper limit, uh, underscore the lower limit. Okay, and here we get this. And and this is, here's our approximate answer. So let's put that in, so it's 3. 3.2444, or actually, we, actually, this is equal to 3 point, or 32, oops, 32.4 repeated. Okay, so that makes sense how to type it in. We're going to just type in int, which means do an integral, caret the upper limit, underscore the lower limit, and then whatever your function is, dt, and then you'll automatically calculate. 
And if you do not have it, it tells you what the antiderivative is. And so when you need to show your steps, you can see if you made the step in between correct. Okay. So please use your calculators to check your work. Do it by hand a couple times, but use a calculator to check your work. All right. So let's talk about physics for two minutes and we'll probably still be done a little bit early, to be honest. All right, so let's do the physics. Um, all right, so let's have a particle. So the displacement of a particle and the distance traveled within the time frame. So here, a particle moves along a line with a velocity of this measured in seconds. So here, here's my function. So if I took the graph of my velocity, right? So if it's my v of t, what's below it represents my position, okay? So find the displacement of the particle during the time period between one and four. And so here we're just doing the interval between one and four, um, v of t, v of t dt. So I would tell me, I would tell me how much my particles would be either to the left or the right. Um, because remember that v prime or s prime of t equals to v of t, or in other words, the integral of v of t is equal to s of t. So these are equivalent statements. This is what say these are equivalent statements. So we just plug in what b is, and so we're going to go from 1 to 4. So t squared minus t minus 6. And that's going to equal t cubed over 3 minus t squared over 2 minus 6t, evaluated between 1 and 4. All right, so we'll just crunch through that, and you're going to get minus 9. All right, so, so that's the total displacement. So I moved, so my particle, after it's gone through this, has gone negative 9.2 units in whatever direction, whatever unit, whatever, along whatever line it's gone, right? So if I had a particle here and it was going um, like this and then like this, right, it ended up at minus two, 9.2 units back from whatever positive order according to my line. Um, actually, let me open up Desmos real quick. I want to open up Desmos. 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 Let me put this in here. I want t squared plus T minus six, because that's what I had. Yeah, okay, I'll just put it in as X's. There we go. All right, and so we want to figure out what happened here. So from zero to six, right? So if you're at zero, it's all this area. So this area right here, right here between this area up to three, and then from three from here to here, it's plus that area. And if I did the math, um, according to this, right, it ends up being that this, this area here is slightly bigger than this area here. All right, so now let's look at um, displacement. So displacement means um, our distance. So here, here the first one was displacement, distance travel. How much did the thing move? Well, here I just want to take, just 
there's two ways of doing this, right? And I'll do one way and we'll do the other. So here, we actually looked at this. Let's, let's make this more accurate now. Now that we actually know what it is, it starts from this and goes up to six. This is at six. This crosses over at three, as we saw. So it's all this area minus all that area. And that gives us this. For distance, we just want to know how much the particles move. Like so, the actual. So we could do the integral between one and four of the absolute value of the of t, which is fine, right? That's perfectly fine to do. Um, but in order to do that, move from zero to, oh, four. Did I say six? No wonder. Here, so four. Okay, from zero to four. All right, so here, from zero to four, and we know it switches over at three. So here, I can just take, I know it's negative up to three, so I can do from one to three. I'm not doing the right side. Hold on. For some reason, I thought we were going from zero to six, not from one to four. Did I have the right numbers on the page? Yeah. Did I have the right numbers in my head? No. Okay, so let's just do this right here. So let me really look at the graph real quick. Let me really look at that graph real quick. Bring back the graph. So we're only doing from here here. Let me zoom on in. Actually, let me make this real easy. We'll have x equal to 1. And then we have x equal to 4. That way it's really clear. Zoom in. All right, so we're doing the area of this. So from here to here, this adds up negatively in our integral. And from here to here, it adds up positively because it's above, right? So this, this area minus this area. And when we do that, we get minus 9 halves or negative 4.5, right? So that means the particle went backwards. I want to find the distance. And that the distance is what the distance would be instead of, let me go back to our thing distance would be the, the absolute value. And so it'd be this area plus this area. Instead of counting this negatively, we'll count, count this positively. We'll count this one positively. And in order to do that, so we have the absolute value of v of t from d to t is just the same thing. Well, it's minus v of t from 0 to 3, because that's, we want to flip that upside right, dt plus from 3 to 4 of v of t the way it was. All right, well, if we do that, well, minus V of T, well, it's just gonna be the same thing with this, just I'm gonna have a minus sign everywhere. Um, I'm just gonna flip all my signs. And that's from one to three plus, and then here, this is exactly this. We just leave it as is. We don't have to calculate anything more. Um, And if you calculate this, and just jump this to a calculator, you'll get 69.6. Um, is that one? No, this is the absolute value. These are absolute value signs. So let me make that a little bit more clear. Okay. Thanks for the person who answered that. So this ends up being equal to, make this a little more clear, 61 over 6, or roughly 10. Um, and since this is measured in meters per second, so this will be meters, and this will be meters. So I could actually probably write 4.5 meters to the left, because I'm assuming right is the correct thing. 